I want to thank every single member of Unite the Union at St Mungo's Broadway because you have been a total inspiration. Yes, it was about your terms and conditions. Yes, it was about your respect at work and your demand to be listened to. But it was also, of course, always about maintaining the quality of the service that you provide day in and day out. Without taking strike action, uh, and without escalating, we would not have won this dispute. The strategy was correct to move from seven days up to ten days. We held our nerve and, and look at the result we've got. I'm so pleased to be here to be able to say that we won that. So just to give, give some background to the dispute, it's, it's a merger between two organisations, um, one being Broadway, which was... Uh, a, a homeless charity with approximately 250 staff um, with a merger with St Mungo's which is a bigger charity, a housing association still working with homeless people with about a thousand staff. St Mungo's in particular in this sector was always the leading organisation, it was always very well respected, it paid decent terms and conditions and treated its workers with respect. The chief executive of Broadway, the smaller organisation Howard Sinclair became the chief executive of the larger organisation through essentially what we believe was a deal done on the back of a beer mat. The chief executive of St Mungo's exited We've recently discovered he was paid off nearly £160,000 on top of his annual salary, although the executive team tried to hide that fact from us. And then Howard Sinclair brought his own team of managers and announced that they were going to impose a raft of changes which involved de-recognising the union effectively, taking um, negotiation around paying terms away from us, trying to reduce the number of reps, um, cha unilaterally changing HR policies and procedures, um, and then putting this all under the heading of um, this Orwellian phrase of retrospective consultation, so where they make the changes and then talk to the people afterwards. He had imposed huge pay cuts for frontline staff, for new starters and for all existing staff in restructures. And of course, you know, workers aren't stupid. They know that after six months there'll be a restructure and they'll be getting pay cuts themselves. His workers that look after the most vulnerable people in society, he's happy to pay them 20 grand a year. But he takes a 34 grand pay rise and he wouldn't reveal to us what the rest of the executive team had also taken. Before the first strike, we, we had a fantastic ballot um, result, big big turnout, more than two thirds of our members voting in a 96% yes vote, but then we had the meeting to determine what kind of action we were gonna take, and we knew that it had to be serious. We knew it couldn't be one of these one or two day strikes that they would have easily just kind of ridden out. So um, the reps met before the members meeting um, and, and, and I said, look, look, I think we need to, to do um, five days um, here. And uh, I thought it was going to be a tough argument and I did worry about losing it, um, losing, that, losing that argument. But we, we, we nevertheless went to the meeting and we proposed that. And it was a meeting of about 130 members um, and weren't met, we were not met with a single person saying, you know, we need to do something more conservative. Uh, people agreed that it needed to be serious. Then some people started saying, what about seven days? And at, at the end, end of the meeting, we had a vote and, and the meeting unanimously voted for seven days. So um, that, was, that was a brilliant moment, really, that, that well, our five-day proposal was considered too conservative. We had, I think, 19 picket lines in total across London, Bristol and Bath. And the great thing about that was that they really were self-organised by our members, most of which I think had never been on strike before. But not only did we pick it, we had two demonstrations, I think, every day where we were going mainly to local authorities because the other side of this is not just how they're treating workers really badly, but how uh, local authorities have given pu public money a premium price for, to St Mungo's to deliver a, a higher quality service based on um, higher terms and conditions and then that money is in what is, is instead going um, in, into the, the pockets of, of the executives. What St Mungo's Broadway we're planning to do is part of a bigger battle we are facing. It is a race to the bottom which too many private companies are doing and too many housing associations are now doing where they are happy to cut the pay of frontline workers. And what you have said over this dispute is that we have to draw a line. 
what we've also seen over the last few weeks is that some one goes Broadway staff care passionately about the high quality service that you deliver and you don't want to see anything threaten that. We don't want to see anything threaten that in Islington and other councils and that's one of the reasons why we were so keen to be there in solidarity alongside you. We had a mass meeting to vote for, for what further action we should have and there were two abstentions but other than that it was pretty much unanimous to take 10 days of action and they would have gone again and they would have gone again and management knew that. We now have a proposal, all new starters back on agreed NJC rates, Up, upward harmonisation of Broadway and Tupid staff by April next year, A commitment to follow Unite's recognition agreement and all other collective agreements in full. And a proper consultation over HR policies and procedures. Well done to everyone. The support from Unite, both regionally and nationally, has been fantastic. The support from members of Parliament and councillors has been fantastic. And all of these things have helped secure this victory for us. But most humbling of all has been the support of trade unionists and workers of every type and of every profession across the country that have collected and sent messages of support and made it clear that we were not alone and that our fight was their fight. At the negotiation yesterday we said well you know we've got a rally outside your HQ tomorrow and it's too late to call it off and he said please invite me to speak so I said yeah you know go ahead knock yourself out and I thought it was a little bit disappointing what I what I expected him to say was do you know what we hold our hands up we got it terribly wrong. We've worked with Unite to get it right and we intend to continue working with Unite to ensure that we get it right in the future. But he didn't say that. The irony on all of this is that we agree with each other. You know, we are being put in an invidious position by the decisions that are being made about our funding. Everyone here knows that. Everyone believes that we need to influence and fight on that. What about your pay rise? What about your pay rise? I'm going back to work now. You should take a pay cut. You're, take a pay cut. You're going back to work now. You are going to have a little moan about my pay for a little bit longer. I will come and talk to you about that in the near future. Don't deduct our pay! We will continue to negotiate with Howard Sinclair and the executive team. We need to make sure that we hold them to the promises that they've made. Um, and, and if necessary, if they renege on those promises, we have to be prepared to do this again. We have to be clear about that. I wanted to touch on um, a couple of disputes that I think um, in terms of the solidarity that's been offered to us, that we should extend some solidarity back to them. First of all, there's a dispute um, uh, run by uh, workers in Doncaster, the Care UK dispute. Workers yeah. who've been out over 90 days um, in dispute against a vicious hedge fund who are trying to privatise part of the NHS. They deserve our support and we should think about what we can do to practically offer that to them. And then secondly, I'm sure people are aware that the, the Fire Brigades Union have been on strike recently for four days in defence of their pensions against an attack by a vicious Tory government. Ricky Matthews is an FBU executive member who was sacked by a Tory administration in Buckinghamshire. We can't let this happen as trade unionists and we need to show them solidarity. If all trade union members were as strong as you are and as strong as you have been, the trade union movement will be as strong as it was in its heyday. And I hope this is the start of that fight back. Just on Monday, I was at a meeting with a group of workers in another housing association where they are trying to get organised. We've got about 50 members that are trying to get organised. And on the way home with one of the members that has come to this meeting, she said to me, do you know what? I just looked at what some mungos were doing and I just thought, 
Well, if they can do it, if they can fight, why can't we fight as well? Those conversations will be going on all around every single association that is a member of our branch, and we have 140 of them. So let's see a whole strike wave across this whole sector. Let's stand up and say enough is enough. We will not tolerate a race to the bottom. Solidarity.